So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me start our discussion this afternoon by talking about a very, very important topic on electricity supply interruptions. Now, we live in the modern times and as we move forward, uh, adapting digitalization, adapting a lot of these new technologies, let us not forget that part of our population still deals with electricity supply interruptions. And I want to establish uh, this early that the goal of our presentation today is not to be overly critical of government agencies. That's not our goal. Our goal is um, to present uh, useful findings, which hopefully should feed into the policymaking pro process. Uh, and uh, the overall goal is actually to help our uh, power sector uh, perform better in the future. Okay. So we also want that uh, our study should uh, guide the future uh, research because electricity supply interruption or the reliability of electricity in our country is not really a popular topic because we have been too focused on increasing the access to electricity in the past. So the, all our policies were really um, concentrated in that area. So we're hoping that, I'm hoping that after my presentation today, somehow uh, we, we can talk more about electricity reliability. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's first appreciate the idea or the fact that electricity is indispensable in our lives today. And I, I know that you all know this uh, by heart, that a lot of us cannot function, or maybe we can, but maybe not as productive if uh, electricity is not continuously supplied to us. So a lot of the businesses, a lot of households really rely on the continuous supply of electricity. So it's not just access to electricity that's important. It's also important to have electricity uh, 24 hours a day. Now, uh, the value of electricity lies in the fact that there are interdependencies among critical infrastructure. So electricity is used as an input in many of the production processes of a lot of businesses. Uh, the banking sector, for instance, is heavily reliant on electricity. And I think it's difficult for them to function without electricity. Same with uh, the air transportation sector. So, so in, in recently, we had a problem uh, in the air transportation sector because of uh, the, the problem with electricity supply. So having said that, uh, we know that uh, when electricity supply is not continuously uh, uh, given to businesses, this affects their income. And when uh, the, the business incomes are affected, it it also cascades down to their employees, right? uh, uh, Lower working hours for employees would translate to lower wages. And uh, households experiencing uh, intermittent uh, electricity uh, reduces their productivity because they can't really use the machines that are powered by electricity. So, um, and they also incur more uh, they also incur more co cost in, in providing other sources of electricity, such as kerosene, such as emergency lamps, and all of these things. So when, when we add all of these impact to the society, uh, you somehow get the idea that an electricity supply disruption is very costly to our economy. So that is the drive in, in doing this research. We wanted to know, we wanted to look at the trends in electric, electricity supply interruptions in the Philippines in the hopes of maybe we can, we can observe something and we can, we can um, state some, say something about it and maybe uh, the government can find uh, something useful in what we, we have done here. Okay, so you might all be wondering are electricity supply interruptions an issue, really an issue in our country? Especially if you are residing in Metro Manila wherein electricity supply interruption is not really that frequent. But uh, there are indications, yes. Yeah, so we looked at the World Bank Enterprise Survey 
And um, electricity is one of the factors, top five factors that were identified by businesses as an obstacle for firms uh, in the Philippines. So when we look at this more closely, we also found that in the Philippines, the average losses of firms due to electrical outages is around 0.8% of their annual sales. And uh, what's interesting to me is that a lot of firms, for almost 43% of firms in our country actually owns or share a generator. So this is the giveaway. If firms are preparing themselves for not continuous supply of electricity, then there must be something um, unreliable <laughs> in our electricity supply. Um, on average, these firms that were interviewed were sourcing around 39% of their electricity from the generators. So there are, there are indications that uh, this is a problem. But we didn't really look at uh, the businesses in this study. Uh, we wanted to know the experience of households outside of the national capital region. We wanted to know um, how is it, how is it outside the, the, the NCR region by looking at the data of electric cooperatives. Now, there are different kinds of distributing utility. There are the private sector, the private utilities, the electric cooperatives, and other, other types of um providers but which shows to to look specifically at uh, the data of electric cooperatives because they are a very important players player outside of the NCR in this table we can see that in Visayas and Mindanao they are the providers of uh, more than 60% of electricity for households outside of the NCR so ganun sila ka importante and uh, currently, there are 121 electric cooperatives under the supervision of the National Electrification Administration. And uh, we sent um, requests to all of them, but we only, only 37 of them um, were kind enough to give us data. Uh, but we looked at the, the distribution of our samples. Uh, based on the region, and somehow we were able to mimic this, the distribution uh, based on based on uh, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao uh, categorization. But unfortunately, yung based on size, we were not able to uh, no, to to replicate that in our sample. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the data that we've gathered still provided uh, useful information, which I think would benefit our policy. Okay, so from the monthly interruption report that is submitted by the, these electric cooperatives to the National uh, Electrification Administration, we utilize three indices that um, that gives us an idea on the the quality of uh, electricity supply. So it, somehow this this uh, tells us something about the reliability of electricity. So the first index is the System Average Interruption Frequency Index. It tells us how frequent an average consumer of electric cooperatives experience uh, supply interruption over the, the study period. Then we looked at System Average Interruption Duration. How long did they experience this uh, power supply interruption? And then lastly, the Consumer Average Interruption Duration Index um, Whenever they experience like uh, electricity supply interruption, how long did it take to restore the power? So our study will just revolve around these three indices. Okay, so let us first look at the frequency of power supply interruptions. Um, in the table, you will see uh, a summary of what we have found. Now, uh, in 2015, an average consumer of electric cooperatives experienced around 7.1 times uh, electricity supply interruption, so seven times a year. And but uh, throughout the years, this has been reduced to 5.7. The latest data that we have, uh, this is in 2021. We also have a disaggregation of our data based on the island group, wherein um, it is obvious that. Consumers in the Luzon area 
has experienced more frequent uh, electricity supply disruption uh, when we compared uh, those in the Visayas and Mindanao region. Okay, uh, the good news is that uh, electricity uh, ECs or uh, electric cooperatives uh, in a small, medium, and large category and mega large category has been able to reduce the frequency of electricity supply interruptions over the years, according to the data that we have. Then uh, the, the MIRs, the Monthly Interruption Report, also specifies what are the common causes of this electricity supply interruption. So there are many categories uh, which I will read. Yung una, there's a uh, human, because of human um, error. Uh, it may be because of lightning. It may be because of major storm disaster. Uh, it's possibly because of a scheduled interruption, which uh, ele um, um, electric cooperatives do for maintenance purposes. Uh, it could be because of trees, because of overloading, error in the system, or just the supply issue. Um, equipment, problem with the equipment, and uh, earthquake. And then there are these categories, which are others not as classified, unknown, or not stated, meaning um, the cause of the power supply interruption uh, cannot be cannot be identified or cannot be categorized based on the, the, the first few ones that I've um, read. So from this table, we can see that uh, frequent power supply interruption is really mainly caused by issue related to the power supply to electric cooperative. So we really do have an issue of supply here. Okay, so we, built a, we just built a line uh, to see the trend on the frequency of power supply interruptions. And we see naman that, there, that over time, this has decreased. And then uh, the, the causes, uh, we tried to aggregate them again into broad categories, just so we can simplify things and that we can, we can understand it more from a layman's perspective. Um, so we have these four categories. One, uh, issue related to supply, which is just the issue of supply, it's, it's a single issue of supply, which uh, you will see in the figure is very, very uh, large. And then we also aggregated the issues that are related to technical operation of the electric cooperative, that one is in green. And then environment related issue that involves lightning, earthquake, or storm disaster. And then the other's issue, which you can see in gray, which is in gray, uh, this suggests that there, there is still a need to, um, to improve the data reporting and to streamline the categorization so that we can um, identify this uh, further. But uh, for now, let us just first this, um, let's uh, not consider the gray and just focus on the three causes of uh, electricity supply interruptions. Uh, from here, we can see that uh, interruptions caused by uh, environment-related factors really uh, sum up to be a big factor causing the frequency of um, electricity supply interruptions in the Philippines. Um, second to that is uh, technical issues and uh, supply issue is a big issue on its own even if you don't uh, um, include it with other factors, even if you don't uh, aggregate it with other factors, supply issue on its own is a big, big factor uh, causing the frequency, the frequent power interruption. We also disaggregated our data based on uh, the main island group, so Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. And we can see that cons consumers in the Mindanao area have a relatively better experience than those consumers in the Luzon and Visayas. So we can see that in the Visayas, uh, electricity supply is really a very big factor uh, that 
could explain why there are frequent power interruptions in the in the Visayas area. So, John. Um, next, we look at uh, the duration of the power supply interruption. So, how long do these power supply interruptions usually last? Now, in 20. 15, the data says that on average, the total hours uh, wherein there were no power supply uh, was 11.3 for an average consumer of electric cooperatives. And uh, thank God that in 2021, this was already reduced to 8.8 .8 hours. And uh, from the table, we can also see that uh, consumers in the Luzon area have experienced the longest hours of no electricity. Uh, uh, consumers in the Mindanao have bet, again have better um, experience, but it is based on uh, the sample electric cooperatives that we have, okay? Let us uh, not forget. Um, data based on distribution size is suggesting that mega large corporation, uh, mega large um, electric cooperatives are better at managing um, electricity supply interruptions uh, uh, that when they occur, so the duration is uh, relatively uh, smaller. And uh, there are three top causes of um, long power interruptions. These are um, the supply, supply issue, when there is a major storm disaster, and when there is a scheduled power interruption. So similarly, we plot and we just looked at the trend over time and we see somehow it's decreasing naman. It's decreasing, which is uh, a good uh, indicator. And then uh, again, we group uh, the factors based on broad categories where we found that um, the long duration of uh, power supply issues is really caused by factors that are, re that are uh, related to environment. So parang the biggest of this is the, the, the major storm disaster. So when there is a major storm, talagang you, you can expect that it's, it will take longer to restore power. Because which, which I think is um, expected because when there are major storms, uh, a lot of the infrastructure are being destroyed. So it, it takes a, lot, a longer time to put things back together and uh, restore power. So. We also disaggregated data based on uh, the island group to zone besides and the now, where you can see that a lot of the environment related factors are affecting the consumers in the Luzon area, while in the Visayas area, the problem is really with supply. And again, Mindanao, uh, consumers in Mindanao are failing better, are experiencing better when it comes to electricity supply interruptions. Okay, so uh, one way to mitigate uh, the impact of electricity supply interruption is to bring back power uh, the shortest time possible when, when interruptions happen. So this is uh, what the next section is about, uh, power restoration. So on average, uh, when when uh, electricity supply interruption occurs, uh, it takes about 1.5 hour, hours to restore based on the 2021 data. And um, major storm disaster, again, is, is the biggest factor. Um, it, it, it's long, it takes longer to restore power when when uh, the, a major storm disaster hits. So we looked again at the trend and we see that uh, parang somehow, I don't know, parang it, it's, it's stable around the mean over time. So it, it's not really changing. It's an average of 1.5 hour. Uh, parang doon na siya sa interval na yun. And uh, lastly, we also measured the size of effect because we, want, we wanted to see if if this is an issue, how big of an issue is this? And um, what to compute the uh, the inter the impact of the interruption, we computed the million consumer hours. So million consumer hours is actually the the duration of uh, the electricity supply interruption times 
the number of consumers that are affected. And of course, uh, the higher the number, having said that, the higher the number, the higher the impact, the higher the, the cost to the economy. So by island group, um, we see that uh, it's more detrimental in the Luzon area. So electricity supply interruption is more detrimental in the area of Luzon, probably because there are a lot of consumers in Luzon. And also uh, we can see the same based on size. So it's more damaging for mega large ECs, probably also because they have a lot of consumers. And uh, the, the impact is greater uh, because of supply issues and uh, major storm disaster. When, when these things hit, a lot of consumers are really affected. So we saw that uh, when we plot it against time, we can see an increasing trend, but uh, let us not be deceived by the increasing trend because uh, there are many uh, factors that are affecting the consumer hours. It could be that baka naman, through the years, uh, the, the consumers are increasing. That's why the trend is uh, going upwards, or it could be that uh, uh, it's it's becoming a more frequent event. So, pwedeng uh, dalawa yan. Okay, so uh, similarly, we categorize uh, the factors uh, into three, into three broad groups, the supply issues, the technical and environmental, and then uh, it's very evident in this uh, figure that environment related factors are, uh, it's, it's really the group that has a very, very big impact to consumers. Uh, the number one factor again for this one is the major storm disaster. Now, of course, because we just look at the data of electric cooperatives, um, one, one relevant question to ask is whether are these problems specific to electric cooperatives or are, are they just the ones experiencing problems on uh, providing continuous electricity supply? So we, we uh, looked at the Household Energy Consumption Survey of the Philippine Statistics Authority wherein um, households were asked about their experiences related to electricity. And there you can trace whether uh, they are subscribed to private utilities, electric cooperatives, or other types of distributed utility. And from this um, figure, we can see that uh, it's as though electric cooperatives are not faring uh, better than private utilities because a lot of households are saying that they're experiencing more uh, power interruptions with the electric cooperatives and higher rates and the uh, issues with low voltage and fluctuating voltage. So at the aggregate level, it appears that electric cooperatives are performing um, less than the private utilities. But actually, when we disaggregate the data, we see an, a, a, a different light to this. Um, in Mindanao area, for instance, parang there, there seems to be a, a very similar experience from the consumers of private utilities and electric cooperatives. Uh, the, num the percentage of households saying that they're experiencing brownouts and they're experiencing high rates. I, the, the figures are actually uh, more comparable in the Mindanao area. Uh, which which leads us to the idea that probably the the issues that are faced by electric cooperatives are also faced by private sector, and this this issues might be uh, locational locational. But but we still need to look into this further. No, th these are just indications. We can't really say something that's definite at this point. Um, there are just uh, these are just some indications. Okay, so to summarize this very uh, simple uh, analysis that we've done, uh, we confirm that power outages, yes, are still a problem in our country. And uh, the way forward, the way we see it, um, the, the power, there are three areas of intervention, which all of these require time and really heavy investment. But Unfortunately, there's no other way 
uh, we really need to invest in our power sector. So number one uh, area of intervention is the power supply, as we have seen in the data. Uh, we really need to improve the access of electric cooperatives to uh, sufficient power supply to improve their uh, services. Because as we have seen, elect um, these electric cooperatives are very important providers of electricity uh, to, the, to households outside of Metro Manila. So uh, the welfare impact of helping the electric cooperatives may be big, may be really big. Um, the second area of intervention is helping them improve their technical efficiency because um, I think that's a really important thing to improve the reliability of electricity all over the Philippines, we need to improve the technical efficiencies of electric cooperatives. And lastly, uh, the result about environment related factors affecting the supply of our electricity is quite concerning because the Philippines is in the typhoon belt. So we experience typhoon several times a year. And so we really need to climate proof our infrastructure so that when the typhoon strikes, it will take us shorter time to restore the power. But a lot of all of these things, actually, all of these three intervention areas really require, as I've mentioned, really require a lot of investment. And so I, the 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 policy ano is parang all of these are medium to long term goals but i think uh, we really need to um take this uh thing seriously because electric cooperatives are an important segment of the power sector industry Ayan. so thank you very much for listening for us today actually this paper has a part 2 we are now uh, working on uh, estimating how how big of an impact it is uh, to local economies. So yung mga ano, electricity supply interruption, we want to come up with an estimate. How are they affecting the local economies? Ayan po. So thank you so much.